Coming to Sarva Krishna or not, this, this is the main thing. So, Anushilam, all, our all kinds of endeavor, by body, mind, by word, by bhav, keeping aside unfavorable things, always in the bhav, like unbroken stream of honey. Now, this is like a barometer, measure, measuring a scale. You can take it and give a scale in your heart, whether or, or bhakti is pure or what. Reply at once, it will come. Your moods are like Mother Jasoda, Shakha, or Gopis, unbroken. In day and night, 24 hours, without break, you take meal for Krishna or yourself. You should take your meal for Krishna. But how it comes? You are sleeping. You should sleep for Krishna, not for you, but you are sleeping for yourself. Gopi, sleeping and they are walking. Everything for Krishna. So try to be like that. Try to endeavor <coughs> all your energy to please Krishna in a friendly way. Oh, unbroken stream. Then it will be bhakti. But Silarup Goswami has told that this is Uttama Bhakti. Huh? In Siddhavastha. Siddhavastha, you know what is? For them it has been told. We cannot. When you will come in Rati stage, then you can do something like Bharat, but Bharat being in the Rati stage and he was de what? Uh, deviated for three lifetimes. Lifetime. Three lifetime. He left everything like a stool in the age of half age. And that way, half uh, age was 50,000 50, years age he left off. And he came in forest. Anyhow, he had some affection from a baby deer. And death came at that time. And he was remembering, oh dear, and he became dear. So up till that, Rati stage, we have some chance to fall down. So very carefully. So, we should not do like Bharat Maharaj. His action part was Satvik Daya. Daya means? Mercy. <laughs> but, he was deviated. So don't have any act, any attraction or attraction. Attachment. 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 Very good word. Attachment. Hmm. To any one. Valiti devotees, pure devotees and Krishna. Mahaprabhu. Nityananda Prabhu. Be always alert and careful. And when comes to me, devotee, oh, Maharaj, be merciful, merciful to my, oh, this child, that my child should be happy. Why? <coughs> Some attachment. Though sattvic, but not good. Oh. We will support and nourish. 
as a kartavya, as a duty, as a duty bomb. But don't be attached to anything. Only attachment will be with Mahaprabhu, Nityananda Prabhu, Krishna and Radhika, and the associates of Krishna. Swarup Goswami has divided bhakti into three parts. Swarup Siddha Bhakti. Swarup Siddha Bhakti. Then, eh? Sangha Siddha. And then, Aru Siddha. What is Aru Siddha? You. The word Aru means attribution or superimposition. When we're engaged in a certain activity for our own pleasure, but we're offering the results to Krishna so that Krishna himself will give us pleasure so that he'll be pleased to please us with material fulfillment of our material desires. But I'm attributing or superimposing the word bhakti on my activity. This is called arope siddha bhakti. For example, I may be interested in arts and crafts. I may like to sew clothing and I may like to play with dolls. So I uh, worship the deity because it gives me pleasure to make clothing. And I'm also thinking that Krishna, by seeing this activity, which already pleases me, will give me more pleasure and peace and prosperity in this world. Any Gita shloka can you quote? Um, Saradamam Parishadya? No. Just, yeah, whatever you do, whatever you offer, whatever you give away, should be done as an offering to me. But the problem with that is that I'm thinking that it's mine to offer, and therefore it's not really bhakti. Bhakti, the, in the definition of bhakti, uh, all my endeavors of body, mind, and words is to please Krishna, and I'm not thinking that anything belongs to me, and I'm giving it to Krishna. It's already Krishna's, and my soul is offered to Krishna. But not Prabhu. Yes, was clear. Oh. All you should try to know. Hmm? Uh, what is Arup Siddha Bhakti? In and really you are doing the same or not, you should scale it. In order to understand clearly what is Arup Siddha Bhakti, first we have to understand what is Sarup Siddha Bhakti or the activities of pure bhakti. More louder. There are 64 angas of pure bhakti, like Sravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu Smaranam, and so many things which have been described as Srila Rupa Goswami in Bhakti Rasam Rita Sindhu. Now, if we perform any activity which is not in this category of 64 items of pure bhakti, and we attribute or superimpose on that activity that this is meant to please Krishna, then that is called Arup Siddha Bhakti. Example is, we may have a very good business, like flower business, growing flowers, or having a goshala, or having a school, and we offer some of the fruits to Krishna and thinking that I am performing this activity for Krishna, but really all the profit and benefit, the position which we get from that, this is for me, yeah, in order to please me. So this is called Aropa Siddha Bhakti. What he told you? Can you? You, you? You? Yes. No, no. That was Right here. I told for Indian boy, oh. Sydney boy. Hmm. What he told? Give attention, Clear, um, carefully you should hear. I told you that I can ask from anyone. 
very precious part of six days. That one hour daily you should give me, not thinking anywhere else, here and there. The time is mine. Can you? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, so Prabhu was explaining that uh, we will do bhakti uh, for the pleasure of more, Krishna. More louder, please. For the pleasure of Krishna only and not for our pleasure. So all our activities uh, as explained by Rupa Goswami should be dedicated to please Krishna only and not ourselves. Give your back. The word anya abhilasita means other desires which are outside of giving pleasure or activities which are favorable to Krishna with the intent of giving pleasure to Krishna. So a rope to the bhakti uh, has been explained that uh, different activities, uh, if one has um, an inclination to do something in this material world, whether it be art, craft, business, whatever, and uh, he offers the fruit of that. Um, so that is not wholehearted surrender, not many Vedana, but we're giving part, a part of our fruit, and we're still, the main intention is for the pleasure of our own mind and senses. So that is outside of the realm of pure bhakti. Good. Or teacher of Vedya. Uh, it's Prabhu. It's Prabhu. Oh, you should be ready to explain. Um, Srila Bhakti Vinod mentions in Bhakti Prakriti that even more dangerous than uh, an atheist is something in the name of Bhakti that presents itself uh, in the association of devotees. Because an atheist we can recognize right away. So Gurudev is trying to help us uh, in our de developmental stage so that we don't fall into the pitfalls of uh, Ritvik and um, Babaji, uh, all these different manifestations of things that are presenting themselves in the name of Bhakti. So Uttam Bhakti means, as has been explained here, activities of the body, mind, words, accompanied by various spiritual sentiments, emotions, with the consideration of giving pleasure to Krishna. And any other consideration which may manifest in our hearts becomes a rope to the bhakti. I may be teaching a school, but if I'm enjoying the fact that I'm relating with the children and I'm uh, getting so much honor and recognition, then my activities are not devotional service. But if at every moment I'm thinking, how can I give pleasure to my Gurudev? How can I give pleasure to, to Krishna, Mahaprabhu, Nityananda Prabhu? then that activity becomes uh, devotional service. It's not, it's not a question of what we're doing externally in the nectar of devotion. Also, Srila Prabhupada mentions Krishna is not attracted by the service rendered, but it's the attitude of the devotee, what's in his heart that Krishna is attracted to. So our cultivation is an, an affair of the heart. It's not by in, just engaging our body, our mind, and our words, but by turning over our very life to our very day and he'll present our hearts to Radha and Krishna. Oh. Yes, sir, more clear. It's standing. The term Aropita Bhakti is the definition Arop meaning to superimpose. There are so many objects in this material world and a devotee naturally wants to engage everything or oh, don't sleep or oh, don't sleep oh, like that you should be standing like this oh, very small don't I will make you stand up on the bench Hare <laughs> Krishna <laughs> 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 The term arop means to superimpose or to label. So there are so many objects in this material world that as devotees we want to engage them all in Krishna's service. So the tendency will be 
that those objects we have a natural attachment or tendency for, we will want to engage those in Krishna's service as it is very convenient to us or very pleasurable to us. So we have to be very careful that not to mistake this for pure bhakti as this serves our own purpose other than 100% for the purpose of the pleasure and benefit of Sri Krishna. Any example? An example, for instance, is I like to be a farmer. I like to raise cows or grow flowers or vegetables in the garden. It's cold. So cold. Like that. So I, will, I will do that for Krishna, offer the flowers to Krishna, offer the milk for the cows to Krishna. This is good activity yeah. to enter into bhakti, but yeah. we should not mistake in this for actual swarupkira bhakti or the intrinsic pure nature of bhakti. Very good. Thank you. Isn't there benefit from performing In the beginning. You will have to practice beginning from this. There is no other method, no source. By this sukriti may come, association may come, and by gradually this, oh, then some siddha will come, and then it may be, oh, real sadhu you will have, and by this you can enter in sadhu siddha. This is the way, no other way. And that is why Swamiji, your Guru Dev, introduced all these things, mainly these things, not sadhu siddha bhakti, very rare, hmm? only sadhu siddha bhakti. And they thought that, oh, by this we will go to, or oh, direct Golok Vrindavan, not a thing, not <laughs> missing, you know, or one minute in, even by Kuntha Dwarka, <laughs> direct we will go. <laughs> but, oh, they are now where? Not in Golok Vrindavan, opposite. Where? They are in hell. <laughs> not not, not, not a special hell look. <laughs> Giving of Swamiji. Pranam for ever. Hmm? Keeping aside all his teaching. Hmm? Those who are grihasa, okay. They are not deficiating. Anyhow, weak, weak, weak hearted. But those who are uh, insulting him, Dishonoring him. What? More than this. Disobeying and telling him that he was not good. Omnis no. Bona fide guru even. And they are preaching for this. So they are I in hell. Really, they are opposite to him. And those, anyhow, though I have left Brahmacharya ashram and they have come to family life, it is more, somehow, so much better. Or oh, they are following his instruction, going home. They are not so much deviated. I think they are a deviated. Though those who are in a rhythmic system, those who are like this, from Canada, Saranagati, yeah. and telling, no, don't mind. And they are telling that, oh, he, he, he was not a really bona fide guru. So, <coughs> we should know that Shravanam, Kirtanam, Maranam, Padashivanam, Archanam, Bandanam, Darsham, Satkam, Atmanam. These are Saru Siddha Bhakti. Among them, among these 64 limbs of Bhakti, Sadhu Sangha, Nam Kirtan, Bhagavat Sraman, Mathurava, Sri Mutti Sadhana. Sakal sadhana sreshta ei pancha anga 
कृष्ण प्रेम जन्माए पांचे अल्प इवन ए वेरी स्मॉल ऑफ दी स्वरूप सिद्धा भक्ति दी फाइव लिम्स ऑफ भक्ति आर वेरी पावरफुल लाइक कृष्ण साधु संग लाइक नारद लाइक सुखदेव गोस्वामी लाइक रूप सनातन लाइक एनी ऑफ आवर डिसाइपलिक गुरु सिल भक्ति में नोट आप सिल बहुत पास योर गुरु दिस आर मोस्ट हाई क्लास ऑफ लिम्स ऑफ भक्ति एंड दिस आर स्वरूप सिद्धा भक्ति एंड अमोंग फाइव ऑफ बट इफ इवन वेरी स्मॉल पार्ट वेरी स्मॉल amount is done for these five krishna prem is bound to come but only offense is there blockage it anyhow some offense to gurudev to vaishnava then quite kinds of offenses be very careful if you are even in mazak hasi even in joking you are making offense of any guru vaishnav then it is very hard these five limbs cannot do anything but if there is no aparad and you are continuing oh very soon what very soon in 1 2 3 4 10 10 but you can attempt krishna even in thousand lives you have attended Oh, very soon it is. Very soon. Really, it has been told in Simad Bhagavatam. Dharma prajjat kai to wo atra paramo narma. Simad Bhagavate, Maha Bhagavate, Maha Muni Kute. Ishvara Satyo Avarid. Kritvi Sushvi Tatkhana Tatkhana. What is Tatkhana? Immediately. What is immediately? A person who is in the endless chain of birth and death, from first creation, or oh, not in this time, before time, was made, and up till now you are going, and if you are, oh, in such the pure bhakti, then. or oh, it is really very tatkhana but immediately and from simad bhagavate from there you began to hear simad bhagavata no oh, tatkhana was ha huh? it started began don't disbelieve 100% more than 100% or oh, is it true tatkhana but if what you are doing not in the limbs of bhakti this and you are thinking that this is bhakti like a school for training of devotees but you know the result so many kidnapping and bad things were done in swami ji started a school for children devoted children and they were cheated and they became or against of bhakti so there is something there also chance to deviate नो इफ नो श्रवण कीर्तन विष्णु स्मरण देयर आर एनी लिम्स ऑफ भक्ति ओनली हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण और हरे नाम हरे नाम हरे नाम देयर मस्ट बी एंड इफ ऑल दिस दिस सिम्टम्स आर नॉट देयर बट वी डू टू प्लीज कृष्ण लाइक यू हैव अ कॉर्ड and you are giving your whole energy in garden in evening or morning you go to your garden oh picking up some flowers tulsi 
and some fruits of that garden and you are giving to Thakurji in temple. Huh? And in that temple there are pujaris, very selfish, bad nature. They don't give it to, offer it to Thakurji, they take it to their rooms and oh, very tasteful, very sweet. Then what is this? What is this? Silly thing? If even it is given to Thakurji, offer it. But not whole. Why not you are offering yourself to Thakurji, that I am of Krishna? If you are thinking that I am of Krishna, like gopis, like Mother Jasoda, like others, even for Sadhan Bhakti also, it can be used. Whatever do, to please Krishna, to Gurudev and Vaishnava. But these things are what? In the category of Arok Siddha Bhakti. Bhakti is imposed there, but not pure Bhakti. If you are doing nothing, Hare Krishna chanting, then Sarubhat Siddha Bhakti. It will be some effect. If Namaparat, Abhay, even, it is destroyed by repenting and chanting regularly without a stop. Then it is so By hearing Hari Katha, first hearing. So this is so So Arok Siddha Bhakti, not pure Bhakti, not in the category of Swarup Siddha Bhakti. And there are so many, so many examples for this. Be careful. Whether you are in Arup Siddha Bhakti or in Sarup Siddha Bhakti. You can judge yourself. And then Sang Siddha Bhakti. What is Sang Siddha Bhakti? You, Madhav Maharaj. Not so elaborately. also. Don't chant for you. <coughs> chant for whom? Thinking that Nama Chintamani Krishna Chaitanya Rasa Vigraha Purna Shukta Nitya Mukta Avinatvamna. So chant for Krishna, for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Abhyanati Vidandhisya Janangana Salasi Achachinta Tasmi Shigra Devinama. So, the Gurudev has ordered to explain Sangha Siddha Bhakti. Sangha Siddha means, Siddha means get perfection, Sangha means by association. If anything is not pure Bhakti, but get some perfection, according to association it is called Sangha Siddha Bhakti. If I give an example, then it will be clear. Just like, during initiation, we are doing fire sacrifice. In fire sacrifice, we are offering ingredients in the fire, like Oim Gurave Swaha, Krishnaya Swaha, etc. So, for this fire sacrifice, we have to collect some bricks, some sand, cow dung, wood, ghee, etc., etc. All this, collecting all these things, actually it is not bhakti, not um, fire sacrifice. Actually it is not fire sacrifice, but they are connecting with fire sacrifice. So we called it also fire sacrifice. Actually fire sacrifice is that which you are offering in the fire. So similarly, in Vaishnavas they have 26 kinds of qualities. Main one is Krishnaika Saran. If you are Krishnaika Saran, then it is okay. And if Krishnaika Saran, Krishnaika Saran means I am surrendered to Krishna only. 
So if this kind of propensity is there, it is good. With Krishna Ika Saran, if there is other qualities, like Kripalu, Akritadraha, Sapta Sarsama, etc., etc., means merciful, very, not to be always, of course, less merciful, always speak truth, and always equal to everyone. If this quality with Krishna Ika Saran, then the qualities which is attached with Krishna Ika Saran, they also call Sarup Siddha, Sangha Siddha Bhakti. If these qualities are there, but not Krishna Ika Saran is there, then it is not Sangha Siddha Bhakti. Like in this world, there are so many type of person, their mood of goodness. They are not Krishna Ika Saran. They are very merciful to others. They are speak true. They are equal to others. But their activities is not called Sangha Siddha Bhakti. If Krishna Ika Saran, then other qualities is regarded as Sangha Siddha Bhakti. If not, then it is not Sangha Siddha Bhakti. So, if Sarup Siddha Bhakti is there, and it is not, like Brahmapu has told, that Sarupata means if Sarup Siddha Bhakti is there, but if not Sarup Siddha Bhakti, we want to get Sarup Siddha Bhakti. For this reason, we are trying at our level best to get Sarup Siddha Bhakti. Like in association of Vaishnavas, so many persons have come. Some are some advanced, some are less advanced, some are quite neophytes, who is not taken initiation yet. So they came and told going other place, oh, I did so much bhakti. How? Because they are also in association of Gurudev. So one is there is pure devotee. Under his guidance, if we are doing some bhakti, then this call also Sangha Siddha Bhakti. Thanks. Hare Krishna. Om Magyana Tumandrasya Kiranjana Sulakaya Chakshurvanritam Jaina Tasmai Shri Gurubain Maha. So there are many qualities that are found in the scriptures that are considered to be good qualities, like honesty and truthfulness and kindness. But by themselves, these qualities are not bhakti. However, when they become associated with a uh, pure bhakti, then they can be called sangha siddha bhakti. The qualities, if the, they, these qualities, which are themselves not bhakti, can attain the quality of bhakti. Um, I wanted to point out one thing that's very interesting phenomenon that uh, Aranya Maharaj and I were noticing in um, uh, ISKCON that Srila Gurudev has pointed out that Srila Prabhupada engaged us in so much Arup Siddha Bhakti because we were not qualified for Swarup Siddha Bhakti and we actually didn't have any good qualities either <laughs> to engage in Bhakti. We weren't very truthful, we weren't very kind, we know these things. So we were engaged in so many, and so our, our crooked natures were engaged in service and when Srila Prabhupada left the world, uh, he, we thought because these activities were bhakti, we went on doing them, but then they became corrupt. And Gurudev has pointed out so many discrepancies that were there. So now there's uh, a phenomenon uh, we've noticed in studying some uh, speeches being given by ISKCON leaders. They're trying to stress to the devotees now that they should come to this platform giving up a rope siddha bhakti and coming to sangha siddha bhakti, developing good qualities, being honest in their dealings with each other and the material uh, people in the material world. So they're trying to elevate. They've seen this problem that a rope siddha bhakti can uh, backfire. It can backfire. It can lead to um, degradation. So they're trying to bring good qualities into the society. But Again, we should realize this is still not Shuddha Bhakti. Srila Gurudev gave very good uh, instructions in Kartik that Bhakti is a function of Hiladini Shakti. That means Bhakti is uh, its intrinsic nature 
is that it's, it's Radharani's own moon of serving Krishna. Everything Radharani is doing is designed for serving Krishna. And everything in the spiritual material world is all ultimately a manifestation of her energies. And it's coming from Radharani so that she can use it for pleasing Krishna's unlimited desire. Krishna has unlimited desires to be satisfied and Radharani is expert at satisfying all those desires. So she has uh, expanded herself for that purpose. So Bhakti is uh, Radharani's own mood of satisfying Krishna's desires. It's purely spiritual. Shuddha Sattva. Uh, there's a verse, Shuddha Sattva Visheshatma, Prema Suri Angsa uh, Samya Pak, uh, Pitamashrinya Pridaso Bhava Uchate, that uh, this uh, bhav or spiritual emotion uh, of the sprout of prem, the beginning of prem, is like the uh, ray of sunlight which is coming from the sun of the uh, pure devotee's heart. And when that mixes with the conditioned soul's, uh, when that shoot us up or that pure uh, mood mixes with the heart of the conditioned soul, it becomes, uh, it creates different tastes or ruchi beer in the chitta mushrunya, in the heart. These three ruchis or a mixture of, of taste uh, are called ba and are the beginning of signs of prem. So actually p bhakti is a pure function of the spiritual senses of the uh, soul. They're not a function of our material mind and body and senses like a rope siddha bhakti and sangha siddha bhakti. These are things that are performed by a material body and mind and senses under the guidance of guru. And as Srila Gurudev just pointed out, these are the beginning because you have to start somewhere. We don't have our spiritual body and senses, so we have to use our material body and mind and senses to start service under guidance of guru. The problem is, when we lose the guidance of guru, we think that those things we're still doing with our mind and senses are still bhakti, then we would be misled and go down. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. One question. What? The definition has been given of Sarup Siddha Bhakti, Arup Siddha Bhakti, and Sangha Siddha Bhakti. So Sarup Siddha Bhakti has been described as the 64 limbs, especially the nine and five. And Arup Siddha Bhakti means when somebody is not performing one of these 64 limbs of Bhakti, or nine or five, but is performing some activity and offering the fruits to Krishna. This is Arup Siddha Bhakti. So how about a devotee who is not reached that stage where Ladini Shakti is coming and they're performing the activity with material senses, whether Shradnam, Kirtnam, Vishnu, Smanam, Padasetam, etc. They're performing with their material activities and in this way or worshipping the deity, but realization is not there. So in one sense it can be said that there's a superimposition. So sometimes devotees say that this is also a rope to the bhakti when it's not realized. So uh, my question is, what is the situation? Yeah. The question is, <coughs> his question is, if we perform the activities 64 angas of pure bhakti, but we are not realized, we may be somewhat influenced by some. Still, it is sort of still double. Still, it is no. It is not our siddha, our Never. 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 I mean, it may be tamasic, rajasic, sattvic, oh. and so many mixture of annabilasita, rahik, yukta. Karma. And covered with karma, gyan, and tapas. Oh. But it's still, it is so silly. Also, can we? No, no, no. Not at all. <laughs> no relation with Siddha Bhagavan. In the state of it's not pure. If anyone chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. But it is not pure. He has so much uh, animity, duplicity, and other things. But yet it is solution. But not pure. 
this is it. It may be that he will be in Kanishtha Dikari, but not even Kanishtha Dikari. Oh, he will not do any offense, Kanishtha Dikari. So, if a man has not been initiated by anyone, <laughs> ignorant, but he has some sadha by in Krishna name. He has heard in association and he is chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Oh, right. Even then it is Sarukshita, but not in pure state. Your question is answered? Huh? Yeah, if we chant in the beginning, bound to have some, but it is in ignorance you are explaining. Aparad is not serious. Like we may identify with our body. Oh, that time, apra there will be no aparad. Oh. Aparad is... Knowingly. Uh, if it is done repeatedly, knowing that it is offense, then it will be offense. And in ignorancy, it is done. Then it is like a bad karma. It can be refined. It can be purified. But knowingly doing, again and again, and Vaishnava are telling, you should not do this. You should not go against this principle, bhakti principle. Uh, you don't criticize. You know, this is offense, offense and offense. You should be careful. Even he is doing. Oh, then, Abhara. What? from any guru who is not Sadguru. Is his chanting mantra then still Sarup Siddha? Yes. Yes, Sarup Siddha. But not pure. Not pure. It will give some effect. What? His all karms will be good. And they can give money, position, and all other things. But not bhakti. Gaur Pramanande. Oh, any good point. Oh, yes.